Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment is Greg Engel. He's the CEO of Organogram Holdings, Inc., trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol OGI. Greg, welcome back. Great to see you again, James. Greg, uh, you've been putting out some fantastic news. The trading in the share price has adopted this incremental incline over time in a narrow band with the volatility, which is utterly best case scenario for any public company. Um, what do you feel is driving most of the interest in the stock these days? It's a great question. I think we're seeing that people are now, our messaging around focus on fundamentals, focusing on our strategic vision, both in terms of what we're doing domestically and internationally is really resonating with investors. So, and we continue to urge investors that it's really critical at this point to make sure the companies are delivering on their promises, delivering on their fundamentals. And you've seen that more recently with us in terms of what we've done internationally. We've mm -hmm. alluded to it in the past. And also some of the technical work we're doing in terms of uh, product development and innovation as well. So those are really having an impact with investors. Right. In uh, May 17th, you announced that you'd re received an export permit for Australia. And so how significant is that for the economics of the company going forward? No, it's a, it's a big deal. And certainly so, I mean, we've been very active. As you know, we brought in our current president of our international group, Guillermo Del Monte, came from ICC, mm -hmm. has years of experience on the international side. And so in the last month, we've actually uh, received an export permit for Australia. So that's our first uh, global international shipment. Uh, we've also made an investment uh, in a German company called Alpha Cannabis, um, and that will allow us to access the German marketplace. And most importantly as well is that we also received our dealer's license. So we're now one of 10 licensed producers, as far as I know, in terms of numbers that have a dealer's license. And that allows us to not only export our uh, dried cannabis products, which we can do today, uh, but now with the dealer's license, we can export our current oils as well as different formulations of oils to markets in Europe and Australia and other locations. So those are all key facets and, and more to come. Right. You, um, you actually put on a, quite an investor day recently that we were privileged to be at, and uh, it was quite a revelation to me to see how much thought had gone into your your new brands and so you're, you're clearly positioned and ready for the onset of the of the uh, recreational market and uh, and so but it was also very clear that your medical side isn't going to suffer because of that and right. so uh, uh, tell me about those brands and the thinking that went into them because they're kind of fun. Yeah, no, I mean, certainly as you say, our focus is, we're a medical company today, our focus is very much on serving our medical patients and that's critical, right? We've got to have a commitment to them and there, we're supplying them with prescription medication and really mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So that has to continue. But, you know, in terms of our adult recreational brands, I mean, we had pre-tested the idea of Edison um, with the Edison project by OGI last fall to really see, is there a place on the medical side and was that going to resonate into the recreational market for Edison as a brand and also for a premium large flower hand trimmed. And you got a, you had a chance to see our facility recently. Mm -hmm. So you've seen some of the size of the flowers that we're producing. Yeah. And we've taken the knowledge and the learns we had from that brand and created the, you know, the Edison Cannabis Company, as well as the Edison Cannabis Company Reserve Line, which is really that premium product uh, for the adult recreational market. So that's part of our strategy. That's going to be our mainstream and premium strategy. Uh, we're also leveraging our organic uh, production into a line called Anchor Organics with mm -hmm. a little bit of a call out to Atlantic Canada with the mm -hmm. Anchor name. Uh, and we expect to be bringing those um, organic products back to the market this July, August, uh, mm -hmm. this summer. And then finally, Trailer Park Buds, was, which is a bit of a, you know, is a nod to kind of trailer park productions and, and right. that linkage. And uh, for people that really, are, you know, can find humor and kind of looking at themselves and the whole industry and stuff. So sure. that's our real comprehensive strategy and one that uh, we were just at Lyft on the weekend, as, as you know, Lyft was on mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, great response in terms of those brands. Uh, people that were current cannabis users or cannabis naive were coming up and just wanted to hear more about them and were really resonating with them. So mm. phenomenal response. Wow, awesome. So the, uh, the, the, the cannabis brands that are focused on the recreational they're not actually available now. You're going to wait till the regulations change. Absolutely, and that's one of the keys. The regulations are going to be actually are not going to be have the same brands available in the outer rec market that you have in the medical market. So that's going to be a difference. Right, and I noticed also that there was a lot of consideration for the pricing of your products, so that the Edison uh, varieties were clearly priced higher to appeal to a, um, a more connoisseur type of of client, whereas the trailer park buds were generally 
better priced and to appeal to, you know, uh, cost conscious uh, consumers. Absolutely. And so certainly as, you know, a leading indoor producer and really, you know, a company that's focused on high quality products, um, having that Edison line really positions us to kind of key in on that target market. As we've talked about before, we're seeing a lot of the expansion in Canada going on with greenhouses. Right. Um, and we know, and, and as we continue to produce, uh, you know, a premium product and our costs continue to come down because our yields are growing so significantly, uh, we're able to bring that premium product to the market. And we know four years in in Colorado that there's a major place still for that premium product. But you're right. You got to look at your value customer. You got to look at a range of customers. So that's where the Trailer Park Buds line falls in. So sure, the uh, financials have, have also been looking great. And is there? Uh are you able to talk about it, what the financial picture performance-wise is going to look like going out 12 months? Uh, not 12 months. I mean, certainly I would make two comments. One is that we've been, um, you know, we've been actively building up inventory in advance of the adult recreational market. So that's key that when the market starts, we're able to channel fill across mm -hmm. the country. Um, we're really a national player, not just in Atlantic Canada. And then certainly when that launches, um, you know, we had previously back in April received uh, phase two approval, which was part of the facility you saw. That brought us up to 22,000 kilos. Uh, we are imminently expecting our phase three to be online uh, which will bring us up to 36,000 kilos of license capacity um, and to put in perspective that's actually more license capacity than a Freya has today um, wow. so the, you know it shows where we're positioned and put us in the top kind of four in terms of uh, production capacity for the near-term market opportunity so phenomenal for us as a company to be able to supply the adult rec market at launch because it's really going to be critical in terms of brand positioning and making sure that you have shelf space so, yeah you bet so then is uh, is it likely that 2019 is going to be a profitable year for Organogram? Uh, I think you're going to see some good things out of us this year. I mean, okay. certainly as we do our first selling <laughs> into the rec market with the inventory we've built up, right. um, you know, we expect to have a, you know, a very good year this year um, okay. before the end of the calendar year. So Great. Well, let's leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time and uh, torture that one a bit more. <laughs> Thanks for joining me again, Greg. Okay, great. Thanks for having me again, James.